Hi, this is Dr. Tanjanika Kwaskud, the sex doctor. I am taking this time to reflect on Army Hammer's case. If you do not know about this, you can Google it. There's plenty of information to go around. Uh, he has been involved in some uh, pretty serious allegations about uh, abuse, sexual acts with some women and some women who have feel, felt wronged by his behavior. I am not here to pass judgment on that. That is not to be discussed in this form. I have to disclose that I do not know Army Hammer. Personally, I have never talked to him. I do not know him in any way. I know very little about his work and I do not know any of the women who have been involved in this situation. Therefore, I am in no position to pass judgment or talk about this case. I am just here to reflect on some of the allegations and some of the most important aspects that have surfaced out of this news and I want to share some thoughts and hopefully everybody will be able to take some things and apply them to their relationships moving forward. So if you are curious about BDSM, then I have some information for you. If you are curious about what BDSM is, that's not this video, that's material for another video, but you can also look for that online. There's plenty of information about it. I just want to talk about what BDSM is and some ethical principles that should always govern BDSM relationships. When individuals come to a BDSM relationship or situation, there's a lot of negotiation and communication that happens prior to them even consenting to be in a scene together or in a BDSM relationship together. So this is not about someone who's dominant who's going to impose their will and their wants onto somebody else against their will. That's not what BDSM is. So I just want to go over again some ethical principles so you know what BDSM is and definitely what BDSM is not. I am going to be reading from uh, the computer. There is a master BDSM or there was a master BDSM. He passed away, David Stein, and he was very well known and respected in the BDSM community. He wrote some tenets of BDSM that I think are not only applicable for BDSM situations, but for anybody who's in relationships with anybody, with your kids, with your co-workers, with your family members, with your friends, and definitely in your romantic relationships. So the first tenet is do no harm. You do not go into relationships to intentionally damage another person. You do not go into a relationship to knowingly cause pain and hurt and psychological and physical damage to another person. So that has to be very clearly established. The next one is be honest. And this has to go both ways. So whether you are the dominant person or the more subservient person or the top and the bottom, or however you want to call it, the master, the slave, whatever you want to call it, it doesn't really matter. If you are just in a relationship of equals, you have to be honest. You have to be able to express really, really, really what's going on in your head and what's going on in your heart. You do not do anybody any favors, especially not you, if you are always trying to protect the other person from what the other person might feel or think or protecting the other person's ego. I know this happens a lot in relationships. It's like, well, I don't wanna tell him that he kind of sucks in bed because I don't wanna hurt his ego. Well, you're not doing yourself a favor and you're definitely not doing him a favor. So be honest in your communication. Avoid unintentional pain. And this is in BDSM something that is very important because as you know, BDSM can have an exchange of a, a lot of sensorial experiences that can range from the more just shocking but fun to the ones that actually people are going to receive in the form of pain. However, this has to be meaningful and well thought off and negotiated upon. This is not something like, I just like to inflict pain, therefore I'm just going to go and hit people or spank 
to my heart's content. That's not how it works. You have to respect limits and boundaries. And within that, the next, which is communication. You have to be able to establish very, very healthy, ongoing, unbreakable ways of communicating, of really, really conveying messages in an assertive way. This is a learned skill. I understand that not everybody has the ability to verbally say what they think or what they feel. This is something that you can learn to master though, and it would be in your best interest, in everybody's best interest, if we could all learn to communicate a little bit better and we keep those lines of communication open. Take responsibility for your own risks. Do not depend on somebody else to protect you. You have to develop some trust to be in a BDSM relationship. That's clearly understood. However, you cannot just abandon yourself to the hands of others and just say, well, they're going to take care of me. They should. But you also have to be present and be responsible for your own safety and security. Negotiate, communicate, be honest, but at the same time, do not give that power away to anybody else. You have to be in control of what happens with you and your experience. Right is better than right now. That's I read that and I think it's brilliant. Do not rush into the experience. If you are the one who's pursuing some things and are seeking for people who may share that experience with you and you have kind of the salesperson role to be able to kind of recruit people into your fetish or into your kink, be very, very careful not to rush that process. We do not want anybody to participate in a BDSM relationship who's not ready for it. And vice versa. You don't want to be a person in the other side, in the receiving end, when you know that the other person is not into it. I, as a clinical sexologist, get a lot of questions, for instance, of people asking me, well, you know, I'm not really into that, but should I? Because she asked or he asked. If you're not ready, do not do it. That will cause resentment. That is a formula for disaster. You are better off just waiting and another person who wants to really partake in that experience with you and who understands BDSM or any other relationship for that matter will understand that waiting for you to be ready is better than doing it now. Now, don't mess with anybody's livelihood or family. That's very, very important. So be very careful with who you deal. Do your homework and always practice within safety parameters. Always tell somebody who you're meeting, meet in, in, in public places. Do not just give your information away like that without really knowing who's going to be the recipient in the other side and always be in the know always err on the side of caution rather than just throwing yourself at any situation it doesn't matter if the person is a celebrity it doesn't matter if the person is well known it doesn't matter if the person is famous or or has different resources that you don't have it doesn't really matter do your homework and be cautious now, this is very important. When it's time for you to part ways with your partner in a monogamous relationship, in a vanilla relationship, in a BDSM relationship, it doesn't matter. Just do it without regrets and ugliness. I think we're all accustomed to seeing just the very bad and ugly breakups in the media. I think we haven't learned how to break up with dignity and respect for the other person whether it is in a BDSM scene or in a BDSM relationship or just again in any relationship, when you're going to part ways, do so with grace. Go back to the first tenet, do no harm. You don't do any harm while you are with that person in a relationship or when you're breaking up with that person or after. Do not cause any harm at any given point. Finish what you start so if you have started communicating and you need to end things, then say so. 
if you have committed to a scene and you cannot end it, say so. If you are going to, then then end it. But do not leave things unresolved and kind of up in the air. Do not ghost or just disappear. Just, again, going back to the other tenant, communicate. Uh, let me see now. Oh, very important. BDSM is not therapy. It can be very therapeutic. It can definitely help you with some unresolved things that you have, but do not use it as a substitute for therapy. Therapy is its own thing. And if you need it, please go ahead and get it, but do not seek for another person in a BDSM relationship or otherwise in a vanilla relationship to save you and to rescue you from your past demons and from the skeletons in your closet. Just go ahead and seek therapy. Do not use one in lieu of the other. Respect everyone. Please treat everyone with the respect that you want to be treated. That seems very simple and it should be followed. It seems like it's very difficult for some people. Never take your partners for granted. Aim at excellence. Take others or treat others as well as you would treat yourself. Golden rule, very, very simple. And always when you're in a BDSM relationship, always end it to, with honor and gratitude towards the other person. The aftercare is extremely important. Check in, provide that loving, tender proximity and care so the other person feels supported. Do not just leave people astray. Be present and support them in this journey that they're embarking in with you. These should be like simple tenets to follow in a BDSM or any other relationship. I would encourage anybody, everybody, that you get informed about what BDSM is. Even if you don't want to practice BDSM, because it's not about that. It's about how do you go about your relationship with ethics, with respect, with consent, with communication, and knowing your own boundaries and how to enforce them. And definitely with the utmost respect. That's BDSM for you. Anything else that you're reading right now in the media about what has transpired in this case is not BDSM. This is Dr. Tanjanika Kwaskut, the sex doctor. Visit my websites, Texas Sexual Health. Dot com and drtangythesexdoctor.com. See you next time.